Hey everybody, welcome back to Guns and Gadgets. Uh, thank you for uh, taking time out of your day. I'm gonna f do this first type of, I guess, vlog from my car. Uh, this is my office, away from my office, and this is where I get a lot of my thinking done. So I figured I'd, I'd share one with you that I started thinking about uh, after reading some comments on a forum. And it's, you know, should you carry your firearm with one in the chamber? Uh, it's the background noise you hear. I'm driving and I got the AC on, so I'll try to enunciate louder because the GoPro's audio suck. But uh, should you carry with one in the chamber? And to be honest with you, I didn't realize that this was that much of a hot topic. Because in my mind, if you've already made the conscious decision to carry a firearm so that you can defend yourself, your family, or others from imminent harm and danger, then it's almost like, to me, it's like, what the hell are you thinking about? I mean, if you, if you made that decision that you're gonna carry a gun, why the hell wouldn't you carry with one in the chamber? I mean, you should be comfortable at that point to have one in the chamber because you should have gotten some training, you should be going to the range, you should know how to use your weapon. You don't just go buy a gun for the first time, strap it on and think that you're gonna be, you know, shooting a hole through, a, you know, the ace of spades at 250 feet because it ain't gonna happen, folks. Uh, but uh, if if you think about a gunfight or if you constantly envision scenarios where you might have to utilize deadly force and that's if, if you do plan on you know carrying a firearm to protect yourself or others you should be playing scenarios in your mind and training based on scenarios you, you should think about you know what am I going to do if someone breaks into this room and starts shooting uh, what am I going to do if this coworker flips his lid and goes postal? You should think those things through because that's how you prepare. And as you train, so shall you perform. With that said, milliseconds in this game, milliseconds, can be the difference between life and death. And carrying a defensive weapon, which is what we carry, we're not... You know, we're not out on the offense. We're not the bad guys. We're we're the sheepdogs. We're the patriots. We're the ones who are here to protect lives and liberty. And with that, I mean, knowing that, because you're already going to be on the defense, the bad guy always gets the jump. And what do I mean by that? Newton's law. Action is always faster than reaction. Excuse me while I get on this highway without getting killed here. Uh, action is always faster than reaction. So the bad guy's always going to have the jump as it pertains to time. And you got to try to make up that gap from when you perceive the threat to when you actually process the threat to when you decide that you're going to act on that threat until when you actually engage that threat. That all takes time. And the more you train, the smaller that time window will be. But you need to give yourself every advantage possible to minimize that gap, the oh shit gap I used to call it in classes, you know, like, oh shit, something's going on, and this is how I'm going to respond. So with that in mind, not caring with one in the chamber, why would you put yourself behind the proverbial eight ball right out of the gate? You know, we try to train to draw and throw a couple rounds on target and as fast as possible. We, we try to be the fastest draw in the west and it doesn't always play out like that if you're in a real scenario or your shit hits the fan you're gonna have people running around if it's in a crowd people bumping into you trying to keep your balance staying focused protecting family members whatever the scenario is and how it plays out you're not just gonna be standing at a freaking shooting line waiting for a whistle or a bell and then presenting target it, it doesn't happen that way in real life so if you still, after watching this and contemplating this, if you still choose to train to, to uh, carry without one in the chamber, and, and I don't agree with it, um, I've had to utilize many different weapons in the course of my duties, and not once can I ever say, man, I think I would have done better if I didn't have my, you know, my, my magazine in my gun, or if I didn't have that round in the chamber, man, I, I would have been a hell of a lot faster. And that guy, you know, he would have got off an extra round and I felt safe because of that. Or, 
you know, like, oh man, I'm really glad that I didn't have my baton screwed together today, you know, because uh, if I had it together, uh, I would have been dangerous. This, the scenario and, and the, the example sound crazy, but think about it. You've made the choice to carry a firearm for whatever your reason is. And now you're giving yourself one more obstacle to overcome. So if you choose that, and that's your prerogative, but if you choose that lifestyle or the carry style, you hopefully are training every single time you draw that gun out that you're racking that slide putting around in the chamber. You know, every time you draw, you've got to rack that slide and throw around in the chamber. Now, if you don't do that, you're doing yourself a service and you're going to get yourself hurt should you ever have to utilize your weapon. Because you're just going to go out and, you know, wait for the whistle, boom, to the chest, one to the head, or boom, two, reload, one. However the drill, whatever drill you run on your own, you get ingrained in that stuff. And if you just do the same drill all the time, draw, fire, draw, fire, whatever, whatever the course of fire is, if you do that all the time, as you train, so shall you perform. When you touch it, it's the fan, that's what you're gonna react to, because that's, you always revert to training. And if you're not training to rack, rack around in that ad slide and to load your weapon, hey, you're, the last thing I want to ever do is, all right, I, I, I have my chance now to stop the bad guy, click. Oh shit, I'm one of those people who feels safer <laughs> without my gun loaded. So now I gotta rack around, and now the bad guy hears click, and boom, that's coming my way. And I'll, I'll close on this thought, because I don't want this to be a long process, a long video. You want to be able to fire around on target, hitting your target, with as little time and as little effort possible. Why the hell would you make this harder or even insurmountable on yourself? Milliseconds count. If it takes you an extra split second to rack that slide and chamber around, that could be the last second you'll never get back. I want to hear your voice. I want to hear your comments and your thoughts on this because apparently this is a really big topic. Do you guys choose to carry without one in the chamber? If so, please enlighten me, enlighten us because there's going to be people watching this and want to know. Why, what made you decide on that? And how are you training to overcome that obstacle? Thank you for watching. This is Jared from Guns and Gadgets. Uh, about to hit construction traffic. <laughs> Have a good day. Take care and be safe. Thank you. Bye.